uh, Monkey's uncle, all uh, right, always hooking up something cool, and he's always at every fucking, uh, he's at every broadcast, and I got to give him props. So, cheers, man. Sorry to get all serious here, he says, but I think this video is worth watching. Larry McDonald was a real patriot, and his words ring true today, as they did when he was on this episode of Crossfire. Man, that's an old episode. Remember, fucking, that's where Tucker Carlson made his bones in the 90s. Believe it or not, Crossfire. I'm not fucking joking around. Anyway, it's a little long, uh, so you don't have to watch the whole thing, and I, I understand. All right, man. Well, cheers to Monkey's Uncle. Happy 420, dude. Let's see what you got in store for us. Let's get a little serious. Hello? Let's get a little serious here. Put the PC shot on. Here it is. Let's see what they... This is. Uh, looks like an 80s. It looks like the 80s Crossfire. Crossfire was on for a while. There is an elite core in this country that has dominated American society. Well, well their now. objective is to try to bring about a gradual transition in our society, a dissolving of sovereignty, and a moving steadily to the left on the political spectrum. Well, who are the they? Belief, the elitist groups that I mentioned, particularly key individuals and policymakers in the Council on Foreign Relations. Council on Foreign Relations. The interview you're about to watch is a perfect example of what happens when uh, a... Yeah, dude. This is exactly right. And by the way, this is not uncommon. Larry McDonald, the Democrat, you know, he was a Democrat at this time. I'd buy that for a Hey, uh, George Remington, I'll get to yours in just a second, man. Cheers to you. Um, but, you know, politicians and people that are in, po you know, political influence, they die all the time. You know, during the, uh, after 9-11, when Bush Jr. had the political clout to be able to do whatever the hell he wanted to do, and when he wanted to go into Iraq after we initially subcontracted the Afghanistan theater to the, quote, Northern Alliance, uh, fucking, we, we went into Iraq and everybody was in favor. The only fucking person, or there was, a, there was like three or four people that weren't, but a senior Democrat by the name of Paul Wellstone was against it, and he was vehemently against it, and he ended up dead in the same fashion as Larry McDonald. So just saying. Politician steps out of line. Just saying. I mean, look what happened to John Trafficant. All right. I mean, I could, I could go on and on, dude. I mean, these fucking people just get taken out. Oops. Oh, sorry. Larry McDonald was a U.S. politician. A politi as a Politics Democratic is serious business. U.S. House of Politics is utterly from serious business. to 1983. He represented Georgia's 7th Congressional District. Despite being a Democrat, McDonald was a conservative and a staunch opponent of communism. On September 1st, 1983, Larry McDonald was aboard Korean Airlines Flight 007. The plane, a civilian Boeing 747, was en route from New York City to Seoul, South Korea, with 269 passengers and crew on board. All passengers and crew, including Larry McDonald himself, yeah, yeah. perished in the crash. The circumstances surrounding the downing of Korean Airlines Flight 007 are controversial at best. Others call it a false flag attack. But one thing's for sure. This was the last interview he ever gave. Mr. McDonald, I'm not a conspirator. Uh, I think even Buchanan would vouch for that. Uh, well, but you are, man. Robert, Robert Wells. Foreign relations. Robert Wells. No, I don't think so. Yeah, I'm a member of the Council on Foreign Relations. You know, yeah. another guy that died. Dude, there are so many people that have died in politics. Another guy that died was Bill Clinton's former Secretary of Commerce, Ron Brown. Ron Brown uh, was a black man. I mean, not that that matters. Uh, but he was the Secretary of Commerce, and he knew where all the bodies were buried when it came to the finances of the Clintons. And he was uh, getting uh, subpoenaed, I believe, at the time by the uh, independent council that was ran by a guy by the name of Kenneth Starr. Okay, and what happened is, is that before Ron Brown could even testify or even subpoenaed, he got killed in a a plane crash, and Ron Brown, believe it or not, um, it, it it came to find out that when they did the autopsy on Ron Brown, he yeah technically was in the plane crash, but he had a bullet hole in the back of his head. He had a bullet hole in the back of his head, even though he died in the plane crash. So I'm just, I'm just saying, dude. Well, you have certainly. Well, it, let me just tell you what Newsweek said. Look that up. As a matter of fact, I think I've got the article saved. I'll show y'all later about Ron Brown and the fact that his fucking, you know, even though he died in that plane crash, he fucking had a fucking bullet in his head. That says that 
The John Birch Society considers communism only one arm of a national of a master conspiracy in which socialist American insiders are plotting to establish world government. Now, he also says, and here's Director John McManus, that's your public relations director, saying that former Secretary of State Alexander Haig and CIA Director William Casey are two of these master conspirators who are plotting to establish world government. Now, what do you say? You know, that kind of yeah, silly, I mean, asinine statement is what makes pe make people laugh at the John Birch Society. Well, Tom, I'm sure being a long-standing member of the Rockefeller apparatus, uh, and as a member of the Council on Foreign Relations of long-standing, you're fully aware that you, there is an elitist core in this country that has seen value in subsidizing communism, of protecting communism. It has? That is correct. Sure. You're accusing me of subsidizing communism? No, 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 no you idiot. Uh, we financed the communists in Russia. All right, most of the people that took control of Russia, the Bolsheviks, were American Jewish people. All right, not to say that there's anything racial component about that, but it was a humongous contingent of Jewish youth that took it upon themselves and went to Russia and took control of Russia in the midst of the uh, Democratic Socialists removing the czars. And what ended up happening is, is that even though the Democratic Socialists took control of the uh, of Russia and killed the czars and the entire family and the bloodline, they didn't know what to do. They didn't know what to do. So <clears throat> the fucking communists or the Bolsheviks just took power. They literally just took power. There's a long reasoning on how and why. I mean, Vladimir Lenin took like fucking 15 years, 20 years traveling village to village from uh, Russia, Siberia, and all these fucking provinces, establishing communist boards and communist politburos and shit. Even though no one else took it serious, the communists did, and when they were able to come, come in and take power, they already had the fucking system established. It was like that. All fucking uh, Vladimir Lenin needed was the military, and the military got co-opted by Trotsky. I'm saying because that they happen to belong to a... No, there a, is an elite policy. core. That 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 Wait a minute. There is an elite core in this country. And we funded Lenin. American society. We funded Lenin. We funded Mao. We funded all these fucking people. Well, the trilateral say. commission. The trilateral the council commission. On council on foreign relations. They here's the government, I suppose. Well, let's face it, they've dominated the State Department for 40 years, and uh, pretty much... I mean, I, by the way, you know, uh, we talk about how Fidel Castro is like our fucking enemy, remember, for all, you know, the Cuban Missile Crisis and all that shit. We put fucking... Dude, the fucking goddamn Cubans in the Sierra Maestra Mountains would have never have been able to take over Batista's army if they weren't trained by CIA agents, and, dude, fucking... There's been fucking photographs... Photographs of fucking CIA agents training fucking uh, Fidel and, and, and Che and all those fuckers, man. All right, but what are they trying to do? Well, well their now? objective is to try to bring about a gradual transition in our society, a dissolving of sovereignty, and a moving steadily to the left on the political spectrum. Well, who are the they? Belief, the elitist groups that I mentioned, particularly key individuals and policymakers and the council. Is the International Monetary Fund part of this? Well, I would say the International Monetary Fund has certainly been set up for the purpose of facilitating that transfer of sovereignty and transfer of wealth on the road. Right, we elected Mr. Conservative. Let me just finish the point, right. because otherwise we'll have a lot of un unanswered questions, that you are looking at a group that has worked to bring about the dissolution of national sovereignties on the road to world government. And certainly uh, you're familiar with the local professor, Carol Quigley, who has been part of your club, in which he admitted all this. And he said in his yes, book... Yes, yes. And uh, the book, well, he's going to say the book, Carol Quigley, I think you all should read um, Tragedy and Hope. You all need to read that book because that's what he is about to quote, that Carol Quigley basically put it out on the table on what's going on with this Pax Americana, elitist takeover, etc. Book, Tragedy and Hope, the only thing I disagree is that we've worked to keep it a secret. You see Arthur Schlesinger, Jr., writing way back in 1947, says, yes, this is the hidden policy of America. 
But we can't tell the American public because they're too unsophisticated to see the value. What is that? Yeah, they are. The world they government. are unsophisticated. What, is, what you say about Arthur Smith? That's the silliest statement I ever heard. He well, never made anything like well, that. Well, let me suggest that you read the May-June issue of the Partisan Review of 1947, Tom, and you can read it for yourself. It's called Arthur Smith. Said said there was a conspiracy. Oh. A conspiracy oh, he didn't use communism. The, oh, no, he didn't use the word conspiracy. He said the objective was to think about it. Well, let me finish. I'll, I'll tell you. He said that the objective was secret policy, which we can't tell the American public because they're not sophisticated enough to see the value, is that through a steady result of the erosion of new deals, we bring the American society steadily to the left, All right. and through a sound concept of benign containment, we merge into the vital center of the socialist left. Those are his words, not mine. I think John Kennedy was a member of that no, no, Let me ask you this. The uh, world federalist movement in the post-war era contained a lot of people who eventually broke with it, and a lot of people thought the UN in the post-war era looked toward world government. Sure. Indeed, they did, up until 48, 49. But a lot of them said, look, we were utopian. That's over and done with. We can't move. And a lot of them came in Kennedy's government. Uh, Schlesinger was in there when they were fighting uh, in Vietnam, launched the effort in Vietnam. Schlesinger was behind the Bay of Pigs. In other words, look, isn't there some move that occurred in the post-war era that now has been dissipated because nobody believes in the utopian ideal of world government anymore? Oh, dude, that's wishful thinking, Pat Buchanan, and you know it. I mean, if y'all ever read Pat Buchanan's fucking books, this guy, know, he knew this was going on. That's why he even alluded to in one of his books that fucking we were on the wrong side in World War II. He said it. Well, I think there are those that realize that moving straight from a prototype of the United Nations into world government perhaps is tactically impossible. But phasing out uh, increasingly national sovereignty into regional government uh, and phasing out sovereignties into international treaties in multiple areas. The whole, er around. The whole movement toward, quote, interdependence. Yeah. NATO is, uh, so, uh, is part of the conspiracy? Well, there are certainly elements in NATO. There are people in, uh, in NATO who are very strongly dedicated to the defense of the West. Uh, but at the same time, you find in NATO a steady dissolution. You find a growing weakness. There's a uh, NATO policy uh, dominated by State Department policies that uh, has not worked. Well, it's a regional it's grouping, and I think, therefore, it may be suspect by the John Birch Society. We're talking with Congressman Larry McDonald, who has recently been elevated, I guess, to chairmanship of the John Birch Society, succeeding uh, Robert Welsh. We'll be back in a minute. Congressman Larry hey, what's going McDonald, on, propane man? I'll hook you up in a Georgia. second, dude. Cheers, uh, Mr. man. Mr. McDonald, your, your predecessor believed that the PTA was too left-wing and that uh, the John Birch Society at one time tried to infiltrate it, or, or so he said, he used the word infiltrate. <laughs> now, are you still, is that part of your program now? Well, I think when the PTA comes out in this program for the test ban treaty, and when the PTA comes out for gun control, it comes out for obviously national legislative programs that have been linked with liberaldom, uh, having nothing to do with education of our children. I think many people are wondering, what in the world is the PTA doing? Yes, yeah. Members you of know, the John well, I, wonder I mean, there's a reason why this guy was assassinated in that plane crash. Him saying things that have now come to pass at this point in time, you know, that's what the parents are doing. That's what the right wing is doing right now <laughs> by using what's going on, Colada, by using the PTA against the public education system. That's why you have parents taking over school boards and things of that nature, because they're against this indoctrination of the children. And I'm glad. It, look, I, there's a lot of things right now that the right wing is not doing. I'll be honest with you, this bill that they uh, passed in the House, protecting women's sports and keeping trannies out of fucking women's sports, I think is a major win and a major moral uptick for the general right wing of this country, if you want my opinion. And that's what we need to go down towards. I mean, embracing all this ridiculous radicalism and all this bullshit, you know, people identifying as animals now, and, you know, there's more than fucking two genders, there's, you know, fucking, I don't know, genderless aliens and two-spirited and all this other fucking garbage. We got to put a, we got to put an end to this. I mean, if you want to believe that in the privacy of your own home, if you want to believe that when you're participating in, you know, sexual perversion, I don't give a shit. But when you start trying to indoctrinate children with this crap, everybody should be upset. Everybody. I wonder about you. I, I wonder about you. I looked you up. You're, you're, you're the biggest joiner that I've ever seen in the world. You belong, as I counted them, to 67 organizations, among which are the National Rifle Association, the American Pistol and 
Revolver Association, the Committee for the Right to Keep and Bear Arms, the Second Amendment, Found- Amendment Foundation. And yeah, the guy likes his Second Amendment. What the fuck? Is that supposed to be an insult there, old man? The Citizens Committee for the Right to Keep and Bear Arms. Well, Tom, I think there's a real drive in this country to try to destroy the realization of our citizens that they have a fundamental constitutional right to keep and bear arms as the Constitution allows. And unfortunately, there are those in our society, including elements of the PTA nationally, not always locally by any stretch, but nationally, who would uh, believe that the federal government uh, should restrict the right of citizens to keep and bear arms? Let what me ask issue, you about uh, the this conspiracy most, again. Well, you can take the issue of, of uh, the, one of the major problems. I'm going to give this another uh, minute. And the problems of the destruction of the dollar. And the fact of the matter is, in spite of promises of the contrary, uh, Reagan uh, has not moved to correct the deficiencies. We're now back to Keynes do you think economics, that's, despite uh, comments to the contrary. Do you think that's a p- result of the conspiracy you mentioned? Is there somebody working on them to get the inflation so that so that this country will be weakened? Well, as a man who campaigned against elitism, as a man who in his campaign rhetoric said that he would not be having the Council on Foreign Relations trilateral types dominating his cabinet, he's got about 250 members of such in his administration. Well, let me ask you about Bill Tracy. All right, all right. You know what? That was very interesting, very serious there, Monkey's Uncle. Uh, I think, you know, those, uh, even though we have a lot of trolls that listen to the broadcast, there are some adults that really take, you know, this stuff serious and realize that we're in a we're in a fucked up scenario and uh, we need to do something. And I think uh, Winston wants the link. So here's the link right here. It's a bit shoot. Cheers to Monkey's Uncle, man. Thanks. I think people needed to hear that. Uh, I don't think that uh, the people that are talking garbage really understand uh, the seriousness of what that gentleman had just talked about in the 80s, and now we're living it currently in 2020 fucking three. Let's get to good guy Greg 420, uh, who donated this, uh, and he said, "Yay spaghetti!" You save big oh money. my you god! Save big money when Are you, you fucking kidding me? Cards. 